Hi YouTube, here I'll be recording a guide for Unreal World. And I think I'll, I'll split it into three parts. And the first one here will be about creating a character and otherwise starting off. The second part will be more living in Unreal World and obtaining stuff. And then the third one will be more about combat. And outside of that, I might show some other exploits and things that could otherwise be useful to the new player. So, for, to start, I'm going to go create a character. You got a couple options here. Quick and easy. Custom, custom, easy, and too easy. I wouldn't use quick and easy. It kind of just makes a character for you. Custom is if you want the basic survival experience. It's the most... Uh, realistic one and then the too easy is what I would recommend for most players to use just makes it well a lot easier this cuts a lot of the grinding out of the game um, you have your cultures it's a bunch of different cultures you can see here that there's a guide about what they are northern peoples eastern peoples and western peoples um, Camelinian is what I would recommend to go with. They're basically just the biggest character. They're the best at fighting and overall the easiest to play. There's other ones like Owl Tribe if you want to be something of a archer. Seal Tribe somewhere like a fisherman. There's uh, the Re Milanen who are like farmers along with the Sarto. But overall I'm going to choose this. Just one of these people. Okay, and here you're going to reroll your stats. Now, typically, intelligence is not too important unless you're going on the the custom start, which is difficult because, as far as stat grinding is concerned, intelligence helps that a lot. But will is more important because in combat. Your will to stay awake is vital to you staying alive. So we're going to look for will. And we're also going to look for strength. Because most combat statistics use strength. We're also going to look for endurance. Because I want to be able to carry a lot of things. Dexterity again is another combat statistic that's very helpful. And so is agility. The rest of them I don't care too much for except for weight. We want like over 200 pounds probably with a Kamalanian. A lot of other characters can only get like 100 pounds or so. The height just doesn't matter. The touch is also an important combat statistic, but overall you can kind of ignore it. The speed is a very important statistic, but overall you can ignore it if you're not trying specific uh, long distance hunting techniques. Eyesight is good. Hearing is good. Smell and taste is good for cooking, more or less, but overall useless. I'll try to reroll for a decent character. This one actually looks not too bad. It has high will. Max endurance, which is pretty much what you always want. And the other stats are good. So, what I'll be particularly po trying to point out is that you want stats that are only two away from the max because you get two skill ups for your physical profile here you'll use those and that can put you at the max this dexterity is not quite two points away from it it's hard to tell from this screen but otherwise this is good enough now i started May have uh, gone a little bit twisted to go through. We're gonna first of all minimize every stat on this screen, absolutely to the minimum. And then I'm gonna tell you which ones are the most useful and the least useful. <clears throat> okay, I think 
got them. So agriculture, agriculture is okay if you want to be like a cur agricultural person, but you know, if you're not a farmer character or whatever, it takes ages to sit around and wait for things to grow for you. Not really going to use that. Building is nice. Uh, a very low building skill makes it take forever to build buildings. Although you can actually have your companions help you with that now. So I think it's a good stat if you intend to build buildings. If you don't, then probably we're going to leave that minimum. Cookery, I almost always try to put some points into. Because overall it just makes it way easier to not starve to death. Reb War is just, I mean, there are quests in the game which require you to have Herb War, but overall I don't really want that, and it's easy to train. Fishing is something that I do want, so we have plenty of options we're going to put it into fishing. Hide working, again, it's a really good stat because some of the most quality Equipments that or items that you can sell are high quality hides, and unless you're a master hide worker, you're not going to be able to cre create a high quality hide. Timbercraft is good if you want it in the early game, it'll really help out your experience, but you can avoid putting points into Timbercraft because it otherwise trains pretty quickly and you'll be doing a lot of cutting down trees. Position is always useful, always. Um, trapping and tracking are more on your preference. You don't really need tracking in order to hunt down game, but it can make it easier, but otherwise it's, it's uh, not too difficult to get skill ups in. Trapping, on the other hand, can be very difficult to get skill ups in, and if you want to use traps, I would recommend putting points into that, but I don't like using traps. Uh, weather war, just don't even put points into it, don't use it. Broken, it just doesn't actually do anything. Carpentry is uh, not so useful. You don't need points into carpentry to create anything that's other than the normal quality, so if there's poor quality items, those are less than normal quality. But as far as carpentry goes, you might be able to make higher quality items, but you don't need those. Skiing, just wouldn't use it. Stealth is very useful to be able to hunt and kill game, and otherwise be useful in combat. But you can train it if you want to train it, but otherwise, as far as the early game is concerned, if you want to put points into stealth, that is a very good option. Climbing, we're going to train that on our own, never put points into that, and same for swimming, we're going to train that on our own. Dodge is definitely useful, you want a higher skill, but as you can see, I can't put points or remove points from it. That is a baseline skill, and we're going to have to train that later on. Shield. If you intend to use a shield, which I would recommend, you would definitely put points into shield. Now knife is a, a weird case. It's definitely not a good combat option, but you're almost always going to be carrying a knife, and if you happen to drop your weapon, it might be more appropriate to equip the knife and use that. However, I would recommend not to put points into it. Otherwise, you're going to choose one of these, or at least typically you're going to choose one ranged option, right, and then one melee option out of the rest of these. And so club, I don't like. Axe is useful. You're almost always going to have an axe like you're going to have a knife, and some of the axes are not so bad for combat. Flail, I don't really like. Spear is always great because, I mean, they're easy to obtain. Some of the cultural spears are the best weapons in the game. 
and they can block in fact so if you're good with spear you can block proficiently even if you're not good with shield bow is typically way better than crossbow as an option just because I mean crossbows take so long to load and use you're gonna have a lot more ability to kill things with a bow and then um, unarmed we're also gonna end up training that skill for ourselves at some point but it's also a very very useful skill to have and otherwise I'm left with a couple extra points here so we're gonna put that in the tracking maybe something like that regenerate the world for you there are some things I like to look for when I'm generating a world so like I, I like to see large clusters of cultures I like to see very large cultural lines and we're gonna be able to see that with this cultural region toggle these are kind of smaller cultural lines the lines are of course these blocks if I wanted to like re-randomize the world and I'd see larger cultures it's not necessarily that there's more um, villages in a larger cultural area like this but it's more that like you can have a larger area like if you wanted to be in a village that was over here you could still be in this village and then travel down here if you wanted to without having to travel too far whereas if you wanted to be up here in this village it would take you a long time to travel to this culture otherwise we can kind of turn off that we can zoom in a little and you see these are the villages these little red dots I like to see huge clusters of them like this like there's a lot of clusters of villages and they have lines between them sometimes this overall but what we're actually going to look at is the the drick region drick people these are the traders of your land they have all of the high quality goods because they are trading from people who have basically sailed here so we, what we want is as many villages as possible in the drick region and this actually looks like a fair amount of villages Something else I might look for is, um, is there a lot of land and is there a lot of water? If there's a lot of water in specifically the Kiese and Kamo region, I like that. I like to see a lot of water over here, but then again, I like to see not as much water over in other regions. So there is a lot of water in the other regions. Why that's important is because overall crossing that water is difficult the more lakes there are the more rivers there are the harder it is to travel so we're going to enter and play this world and I started in the spring you could also start in the winter but I mean the winter tends to be the difficult option by most considerations and uh, here's your choices of all of these. These each of these different starts have a different set of plus and minuses to them. If you wanted like a very hard start, you do something like this for helpless and afraid, or where is it? The runaway slave those are the two hardest but if you want an easier start or the well this is the standard experience but if you want an easier start you do something like one of my two favorites are the not all who wander are lost this gives you a companion which can be very useful or an animal companion and let's see 
a fortunate hunting trip. I like this one as well because it gives you some good gear off of your dead father there. And overall, a really good one, of course, is the abandoned camp because you basically have an entirely built house for yourself. It's not finished, but yeah. I'm going to go with this one. And of course, why I started in the spring is because I want to be close enough to the winter that there's a lot of snow on the ground. And the snow, of course, freezes over the rivers and whatnot. And I'll have this song explain why that's important. To conquer every mountain show, but I've never crossed the river. Brave the forest, brave the stone, brave the icy winds and fire, brave to beat them on my own. Yet I'm helpless by. I face the quakes, the wind, the fire of conquered country, crown and throne. Why can't I cross this river? I face the quakes, the wind, the fire of conquered country, crown and throne. Why can't I cross this river? Pay no mind to the battles you've won. It'll take a lot more than rage and muscle.
I forgot to mention that you can choose a starting location. Of course, I forgot to choose one. I would have chosen near the Drick. But however, this is fine. Join the Owl Tribe. As you can see, I'm trying to travel towards a cultural region. I want to find a, a village to start off with. And I'm having a bit of trouble finding a village because, of course, the Owl Tribes are a bit sparse. And you've seen that I've stopped to otherwise create a fire so that I don't um, just freeze to death in the middle of the night while I'm sleeping. It would also be recommended to create a shelter before you do that. I was a little too tired to do that. I don't have too much food. And this is why I'm heading right towards a possible village. Although, having trouble finding one. As a person, we're definitely gonna avoid people for now. Because any person could be some sort of a robber or otherwise not friendly person. And most of the people who are friendly aren't too useful to us right now. I also have to, uh, rest until not fatigued in order to be able to move faster through the snow. You don't want to go below the hunger bar normally. You want to keep it as good nutrition as possible. Because the worse nutrition you're at, the faster that hunger bar goes up. And the more fatigue you have, the slower you walk really having trouble finding a village. Probably not wait so long to make sure that I can start a fire. sleep a little bit first. That's extra time that you become cold for. And cold itself isn't an issue, but when you start to become frostbitten, that's a lot worse. And you rack up injuries. Really running out of food now. much need to find a village. This, with this start, I really didn't get anything that I could obtain my own food with. Not easily. I mean, perhaps options might be to find a squirrel that's like just running around somewhere. 
and chase it into a tree, throw stones at it until it dies, more or less, or unconscious, and then you kill it. Uh, it's not heading this way. Now also, I'm trying to find high ground locations so that my character can see further through the areas that I'm at. You know, such as the mountain, so you can see further, you know, better chance of spotting a village like I just had. Also, my start was not ideal. Um, a sheep isn't too bad because you can actually milk a sheep, but something like a reindeer could potentially provide more food if I was to actually start starving to death. I could kill it and eat it and a reindeer would be able to carry more equipment for me than a sheep would. However, something like a, a dog or a cow is ideal. Such as this, the doggo. So one thing I do like to do is, if I ever see dogs in a village, I like to make, uh, make sure if there's any big dogs in that village that I'll mark that village for later and I might come back and try to buy that big dog for combat purposes. Of course I'm at a village. I don't have too much to trade but the staff is definitely going to get traded. It's hunting knife. If, if I need to I will trade it and overall I'd rather try to trade well first of all the staff and rather than the hunting knife, I'd rather try to trade my own clothes because I could at least try to make more of those. But we're gonna look... Oh my! Now this is not something you see every day. A masterwork northern bow. It's actually the best weapon in the game there, if you ask me. Like you have no ability to purchase such a thing. I definitely need some food, which is what I'm here for. And otherwise, you would be looking for items that you can use to really just uh, make some sort of money to be able to trade with these players. I'm also going to ask them their names, because sometimes, yeah, they'll they'll have quests and whatnot for you if they know you a little bit better. <clears throat> and this person just gave me a quest. I'm actually going to go ahead and <coughs> drop this before they try to antagonize me too much. Yeah, I'm going to ask, try to find this, this person that was mentioned. The Dorsey. It's just around the corner. Oh, yeah, this is open here. Usually you're gonna try to find the sage of the village and ask them about things they usually know the best, but not all sages will know everything about what's going on with their people. Where the, where is he? Out there, hello. So you ideally want to talk to everyone in the village. Well, all the male characters, adult males. I think sometimes the females can add things that are interesting as well. Okay, what keeps you busy? You definitely have to say yes to their request. This is a perfect request because it's easy for me to do and they give me the ability to buy things without, oh, without a, selling too much of my own belongings. they wanted, I usually just bring extra. 
Sixty should probably lead. I haven't actually played this game in about a year, so I don't think that matters too much for the purposes of these guides. If uh, we can really learn some of the basic commands, such as picking up items, accessing your inventory, looking around and talking to people, equipping items, and using them, we've learned how to do most of the things in the game that we're going to be using. Uh, I would like to know your name at least. What was I supposed to do? Yeah, 160 and I just had 5 listed. Really, once you get into a village, you have a lot more access to surviving in this world because people can be traded with, and otherwise, you're gonna do things like this little quests to get stuff from them. I'm not like I've done that. What was I supposed to? Okay, go to the closet. Where do you want me to pile them? Just to go explore. Or not, did I not already do that? Spruce fruits, or was it branches actually? Am I collecting the wrong thing? <coughs> oh, yes, branches. Of course. To be honest, I'm just going to ignore that now. I'm going to pick this back up and I'm going to pretend that I own this bow because. Of all the cultures, this is the one that's very valuable for trying to find an item like that. There's a couple items and cultures that you want to go eventually try to find. But we're going to try to barter for a couple things here. I think the staff is not going to be worth too much, but it might be worth more than these six Capricoli cuts. So I want to, like, perhaps grab a rope. Really something that isn't too much valuable. I would love to have something like this short bow and ten arrows just so I can have something possibly to kill animals with. Because if you kill animals, that creates a lot of meat. If you bring that meat back to the village, you can cook it and then sell that meat. And that usually is a good way to obtain items that you want. What of my items would you prefer in this trade? So this is actually a trade I would like you can you can ask them for what they would want and then you can offer them and you always want to try to not give them too much because they'll happily take anything that is too much. Like if I was to just try to give them everything even though he only asked for however much it was, you know, like if I try to give him this, he'll be like, yes, that's a very good offer, but I don't want that offer. So the rough for hood, I can do without. The trousers, it's a little bit more of a clothing item that will keep me warm, but again, I can probably do without it as long as I have like a tunic and the staff is just worthless what is best for, best for you I think I'll just give them the rope back sure how that 
I've done that. Let me see if I can find my screen. You can see my protection against swarm, which is really terrible. So I'm going to be going cold a lot. But again, if I just stay near the village, that won't be an issue. However, if I was to like remove these clothing clothings, how could I do that again? <coughs> You'll see that the protection goes down to nothing. And if I put on each little bit, there's different parts of the clothings that protect different areas. And a lot of the times you really need all of this area covered because that's mostly what's going to keep you warm. However, there are other extremities like your hands and feet that are important to cover because frostbitten areas usually. And other than that, now that we have the hunting bow, short bow rather, <coughs> we would love to use that to find <coughs> some game considering that I'm a amazing bow user. I should be able to kill an animal with these 10 arrows. And most of the time the arrows don't break, so you can retrieve them. However, there's also a couple things that you would also do, <coughs> such as one of the most important items you want to obtain is a, an axe. A good wood, woodsman's axe, preferably, because you're going to use that to cut down trees, turn those trees into boards, and if you're any good with timber craft, those boards are something that you can sell to the villages. And those will also be useful. And that's more or less everything you're going to need to know to start off in the game. So, I'll see you next time. Mm.